Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Pamela Walker, the Head of Life Sciences at Gate One and host of Our Life Sciences in the Spotlight podcast series. COVID-19 has been a fascinating catalyst across the pharma M&A landscape. And I'm so pleased to be exploring this topic with not only someone with deep life sciences sector expertise, but someone with a unique lens on the UK M&A market. James West, Director of Pharma Services M&A at Lincoln International, joins me to discuss exactly this. So welcome, James. I'm so thrilled we could connect on this topic today, as there has been a fascinating shift in M&A activity in this space of late. Really, there's so many things I would love to ask you, given all of the movement at the moment. But why don't we begin with your broader perspective on the positive disruption we've all seen across the healthcare ecosystem in the past two years? What do you think are the key changes you've seen from a specifically new product standpoint? Delighted to be on and to share my views. On a development point and positive disruption point, I think, you know, looking at the life sciences market as a whole, everything was going in the direction of virtual and digital. And I think code for many of those service lines and product lines just gave it a big push. So thinking about how clinical trials were sort of virtual trials were talked about, I think COVID has just pushed that into more focus. Got a lot of people just working on the technology to make that happen. Thinking about all the engagements across the commercialization spectrum, that's with HCPs, if it's with patients, if it's with payers, that entire sort of engagement piece has been fired up. And then thinking about supply chain and manufacturing of products, you know, COVID, one of the things that it's shown us through vaccine production has been that everyone wants to make sure their supply chain is secure in, in, uh, in times of turmoil. So we've seen a lot more requests for dual sourcing or even sort of triple sourcing of different product lines to make sure that everything is is backed up. And then also what goes with that around double or triple sourcing, which is to make sure that everything's audited correctly. And, you know, in virtual times, you've got to make sure you can virtually audit sites. So there's been several of those sort of virtual or digital pushes, which COVID has just accelerated over the last couple of years. Mm, and so I guess taking a bit of a step in and looking at the, the M&A deals in the space, what do you think the impact of all of this has had on m and in particular? And do you have any perspective on UK versus US? Yeah, I do. It's been a, it's been a phenomenal ride the last couple of years in life sciences, you know, despite being in a pandemic, you know, that the life science sector has really had its sort of chance at that time in the spotlight. So what we've seen are a lot of strategics and private equity becoming really more appreciative of the resilience of the sector. And so that shift in demand for high quality assets against a sort of pretty steady state of supply has meant it's pushed valuations up, it's pushed deal volumes up. And sort of across M&A, we've seen um, a heightened level of activity over the last 18 to 24 months, something which I'd imagine will stay. And UK versus US, traditionally the US had always been slightly just a bit hotter than the UK and Europe. And I think that continues to be the case, although it's actually relatively close as more funds do transcontinental deals. Hmm. And so then if we look ahead, what would you say will be the three key drivers of the most successful deals and for the most successful mergers? Yeah. So thinking about successful deals, for me, the biggest point is around alignment on, on strategy or direction. So if you think about particularly where you've got a large acquirer and a smaller target, making sure that target and the people who run that business are bought into the acquirer's strategy because what you want to happen is that target to be committed to their journey within your, your broader business and keep everyone on that same path and in the same direction. And then thinking about people-based businesses, exactly that. It's, it's about strategy and direction, but also about culture. Quite often there's really strong cultures in smaller businesses that get acquired and making sure that all those ways of working, that creative spark continues, which I think some acquirers are more used to than others. And for asset-based businesses, if you think about products where we see them get traded, for me, it, it's looking forward. So it's not actually what portfolio are we building today, it's what portfolio are we trying to build tomorrow and keeping a sort of a long-term horizon over for their pipelines. I'm going to throw a fourth one in there as well, Pamela, I hope you don't mind. Particularly for, for bigger mergers, I think a lot of it comes down to people wanting to do deals for the sake of it. And I think in times of sort of heightened excitement, there's a bit of that. So I think always you've got to remind yourself of actually why are we doing this and actually where's a complementary fit? Um, you know, we shouldn't just be doing this for scale or for anything else. You really should think about the strategy and making sure they align. What great pragmatic perspective, James. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough for joining us and taking the time to share your insight with me today on such a topical subject. Thanks, Pamela. Appreciate it. And so that draws our podcast to a close, short and sharp. 
A big thank you to our guest today, James West from Lincoln International. Your perspective has been helpful, practical, and illuminating. 